Welcome to the webinar coordinated uh, by Politicon, the Journal uh, of Political Science of the International Association for Political uh, Science Students. Uh, and the topic of uh, today's webinar uh, is predatory publishing, open access, and the philosophy of IEPS Politicon. Uh, my name is Max Steuer. I am the current editor-in-chief um, of the journal. And with me here today is Emmanuel Rousseau, an editor uh, of the journal. Uh, we also received uh, significant help in preparing um, this webinar uh, from a number of colleagues, in particular uh, from uh, senior editor uh, Anna Figueroa uh, and from editor assistants Andres Acosta and Bruna Verissimo, uh, as well as from uh, other colleagues, including in the promotional uh, department of IEPS. Uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, for uh, today's webinar or then for the recording of this webinar. Um, of course, uh, if you are watching us uh, live, um, you are warmly invited uh, to send uh, your questions. We should have a live chat just next to uh, the slides where you should be able to um, insert your questions or comments um, as, uh, as we speak. Um, we did not receive questions uh, in advance, but uh, that's precisely why we will welcome um, your questions uh, during the webinar. Um, and we also plan to make these slides uh, from the webinar available afterwards, um, also uh, because uh, they contain some links to further resources and information that you might be interested in as a follow-up to this webinar. Um, IEPS Politicon is a journal that intends to be open uh, to its authors, reviewers, and readers, and this webinar, we believe, contributes to that purpose. Uh, as mentioned in the annotation that you might have read, we aim to elaborate on the journal's philosophy and standing in the academic publishing market, uh, but we also decided to connect it to a brief introduction to the so-called dark side of academic publishing, um, and the best known term for that is predatory publishing. Uh, we do not aim, uh, that's a little caveat, to provide an extensive conceptual discussion and analysis of predatory publishing, uh, particular journals, publishers. Rather, the aim uh, is to contribute to the understanding of unethical and poor practices in academic publishing and consequently empower you as our weavers uh, to avoid them uh, in your own work. Um, the discussion and the sources uh, that we use are therefore necessarily selective and that's why we welcome your questions and comments. Uh, on various aspects uh, of that uh, discussion, uh, as well as then um, in the second part, uh, your queries related to Politicon as a junior academic journal. And this concept of junior academic journal is something we will uh, elaborate uh, later on. Uh, so I will now leave the floor to Emmanuel, who will guide you through uh, the part on predatory publishing. Thank you, Max. Hi to everyone. So in this uh, first part, I'm going to present to you what is predatory publishing and the basic characteristic and, well, basically why you should avoid it and how to try to avoid it. To do so, it is necessary in the first part to actually look briefly at what is the standard um, publishing process for academic journals. So uh, as you see on the slide, uh, usually, once you've written a research paper, you're going to try to place it into a research journal, so you're going to submit it, and uh, the editor, once it has not been just rejected, so they looked briefly at it, and it could actually work with the journal, they will submit it to peer re reviewers. This review system is usually double-blind, that is, um, the author doesn't know who the reviewers are, and conversely, the reviewers do not know who the author is. And this part is really the key part of, us review, uh, of the editorial process, because uh, it gives um, related, usually detailed uh, review and point of view on the paper's value, and uh, then suggestion whether to publish or not the paper. If the paper is published, then there is uh, usually, again, editorial process, working on style, proofreading, and other parts of the editorial process. And then uh, the, uh, well, the research is disseminated and can be cited, and this helps gain um, prestige for the researcher and for the journal. Now, in our current uh, academic system, there is more and more a publish or perish um, environment. And that is that it is more and more important for academics and scholars in general to publish. Um, 
whether it's to gain um, a job, which as researcher, as professor, tenure on a tenure track job, or even sometimes to um, to get into a good PhD program. But uh, to publish, you need to choose a good journal. But at the same time, if you want to publish a lot, there is the problem of publishing fast and publishing, um, well, publishing uh, the fastest possible with um, to, to gain the fastest way possible the, uh, the advantages of those publications if you want to keep your job or get a promotion. And this is how predatory publishing developed. It is the unintended consequence of this publish or, per or perish dilemma. Uh, so what is actually predatory publishing? First, I should mention that predatory publishing is a concept that is controversial because not everyone even agrees on its existence. And even people agreeing that it exists do not always agree on what it encompasses. However, we chose to define it in a very broad way, that is, all the publishing alleged academic text without reliable peer review or another form of quality assurance, usually by for-profit publishers. That is, you do not need to actually pay to have to be in, in the case of a predatory publishing. Uh, so this is not enough to distinguish between predatory publishers and no standard academic journals as it has been shown in several research, research papers, as you can see on the slide. Yet, we can distinguish roughly three types of predatory publishing. The first one is maybe the most, uh, well, the easiest to actually recognize. That is, an article to be published will need to be, well, to publish an article, the author will need to pay a high processing charge Usually it's between $700 and $1,000, and then the, the article will be on open access. Another possibility would be uh, with a publisher asking for medium range processing charges, and then the article is not on open access, but under a paywall or a subscription model. And another possibility is actually that the publisher does not ask for any charge. This is less frequent but it happens and then it is a case where the journal um, still doesn't meet academic standards but is uh, run for other uh, incentives uh, such as personal promotion for the editors or uh, easier, ac easier access to uh, themselves publish more. Uh, the main characteristics for people who agree on the concept of predatory publishing, uh, they think the main characteristic of those publishing are first, a really lack of transparency. Uh, the articles published in the editorial process demonstrate really poor quality standards. Then the practices on the research and on the publication process are both unethical and um, they use uh, persuasive language to try and uh, persuade you, convince you to um, publish with them. So to try and help you um, see what kind of publishers we're talking about right now, we have a few examples and a few slides that will show you um, what well, the main examples and how you can see uh, on a website or on an offer that a publisher is, an, um, is a predatory publisher. First, if we look at the first um, slide, uh, here we see um, the aims and scope of a journal. And as you can see, uh, there are three columns on all the areas covered by this journal. And it's extremely, extremely broad for a journal scope. If you compare to a uh, recognized journal on your field, you will see that it's so far, the, the encompasses economics, education, library science or political science at the same time. And uh, they explain their aim and their scope in a very convoluted way with uh, sometimes nonsensical sentences and this is actually a flag for you. This is a warning that the quality of uh, this publishing, this publisher might not be uh, very high and it, we could be in, in the case of predatory publishing. Another or sign could be when you look at the indexing of the uh, predatory publisher. Uh, 
So sometimes they will display the indexes in which they are. Uh, so here you see the, this journal uh, will pride, pride itself on being um, included in a lot of databases. But for instance, here we know that uh, this is fake indexing because at least we know that Crossref is not, cannot um, index uh, this journal because Crossref always um, provides a DOI, uh, so a link for each article they have on their database and we checked and on this um, and this publisher does not have one so this means that they refer to uh, sometimes good quality indexing pieces like Crossref but they do not actually uh, belong with them they are not part of these databases so this is basically fake indexing another maybe easier hint would be to look at the processing charges so as we saw before some um, predatory publishers ask for uh, processing charges for the article usually they will do as we see here in the slide that is present uh, the services that they will provide you uh, in exchange for this processing charge this includes editorial work um, the marketing of the journal and Summer services, for instance, but not only do uh, most journals and most good journals that meet academic standards do this without a charge, but usually those uh, predatory publishers do not actually provide those services. Uh, for instance, usually the peer review is in existence or extremely bad quality, and there will be uh, no um, proofreading, uh, no um, editorial work on your article. Now another hint on why uh, this publisher do not actually follow uh, the traditional submission process and publication process is when you look, for instance here, uh, the, um, the journal already gives you a time for, um, uh, well they guarantee you the time uh, of publication of your article and in a real strict and um, in-depth review system this is not possible first because you have to our uh, editors have to contact reviewers this can take times time it is a long process and even if the uh, review are positive it still takes time and it's never uh, the time is never really set beforehand when editors never really know when they will get answers. And moreover, here we can see in the example that the, tech, the time between submission and publication is extremely short. Uh, and there is no quality peer review uh, process that can take place in such short notice. So again, this is a hint on to uh, identify predatory publishing. Another one that I will go fast on is you can look at uh, the editorial board and exam for example here uh, this is an ad to uh, be editorial in chief of the journal and these ads are, are also a hint that it's not very good quality because in, among good um, journals the, the recruitment process is not like this and you should look at who the members of the board are and um, what they published, what are their standards to also uh, well, judge the quality of the journal. Finally, another example here we have are um, emails received here from um, by Marx, our editor-in-chief, um, where they ask you to publish with them. Usually those emails are really really easy to see, to uh, understand, and with even little uh, minimum level of uh, reading through it, you can see that this is a predatory publisher. Why? First, because they will be extremely, extremely complimentary. Even sometimes, this is not the case here, but sometimes they even refer to you with titles that you do not have, such as doctor or professor, and they will always be extremely positive on your work, saying that they have they were really impressed by it, that it's extremely good quality, and this is really, really rare to receive such emails and uh, with from um, 
academic standard uh, what journal meeting academic standards especially in the case if you are a junior scholar so this series of examples showed us basically the the biggest characteristic of predatory publishing and examples on how to um, to recognize it now what predatory publishing is especially salient in political science and in social science in general, is because uh, in those disciplines, um, those disciplines are particularly vulnerable to those publishers. First, we do not actually have a comprehensive list of who those publishers are. They used to be one. It was uh, called the Bills List, uh, after the name of the librarian that created it, but it was closed down. Um, allegedly uh, because uh, Bill received um, pressure from those publishers. Um, another reason would be that the question addressed by a research paper in political science are more comprehensive and more complex in a way than um, uncom more encompassing than uh, in natural science, natural science, for instance, and this makes it easier for predatory publishers. Uh, and so it's more attractive for them. Another reason would be, again, that uh, the publish or perish uh, environment is really, really pregnant in, uh, and present there uh, in political science. And finally, um, in political science, maybe the most vulnerable people will be uh, the scholars that are from the global south and that are there. Um, because, uh, well, it was shown in studies that they tend to um, be more the target of those publishers. So this is something um, researchers from the Global South should be aware of. So why shouldn't you publish with predatory publishers? There are many problems with them, but the main risk for uh, you, you is it has detrimental um, consequences for your career and your research. So for your career, because it can, well, cast doubt on uh, your work, and so it can have detrimental effects on uh, your employment prospects, or maybe collaboration prospects. But also, it will make your research irrelevant, even if it was good quality. Uh, first, the fact that it was um, published in a predatory journal will make it uh, harder to to be read because if it were, for instance, in a case of a uh, subscription, subscription model, then people will not read it. It's not accessible. But even if it's accessible, uh, usually other researchers will recognize that this is a predatory publisher and uh, therefore it lacks uh, academic standards for them and therefore it doesn't have uh, the, um, um, the, it doesn't meet the standard to be considered good research for them. So all the effort and you invested in it and all the research you've done will be irrelevant in this case. Now, another problem will be, of course, that if you are in a subscription model or um, open access model, usually you will have to uh, pay a lot of money or at least some money, as we showed action before. So you will lose some funds doing this. And in the art, conversely, the predatory publisher will uh, gain money from you, they will profit from this. And finally, overall, it has, uh, in the long run, um, impact on uh, the authority of science in academia, and in a way, it contributes to the rise of pseudoscience because it blurs the line between what is good quality academic science and what is um, work research that doesn't meet those uh, ethical and uh, rigorous standards. Now, how to avoid it? I've already mentioned a lot of characteristics and we've seen examples, but you still have a few other ways and this slide is basically a summary of how you can avoid predatory publishing. First, there is still the bills list. It is not, um, it is now we only have access to the archives, so all the new publishers uh, will not be on that list, but you still have the list of the former uh, work of Bill, so all the publishers and journal that were um, uh, put in this list before. You also have a really good website that is the Think, Check and Submit uh, that will help you uh, distinguish and uh, determine whether the publisher is uh, 
predatory publisher or is a good uh, uh, standard publisher that meets the academic uh, demand and uh, requirements. And you also have, of course, to do to conduct your own review of the publisher's credibility using the hints I showed you. So you can look at the editorial board and the advisory board uh, of the journal, but sometimes you have very famous people that are on this board, but they don't actually know that they are there. Just like the indexing, uh, people in, this, in those publishers, with this publisher, will write the name of famous, uh, renowned researchers, but they didn't actually give their consent. A good way to evaluate the credibility is to sample some articles of the journal and uh, evaluate the quality of the research itself, but also the language and style. Because as we said before, usually those publishers do not provide proofreading or editing work. So if you see a lot of problems with language and style, this is a good hint that you are in the case of predatory publishing. And finally, you can look at the indexing, like we show, I showed you before, but sometimes there are uh, well, well-known indexing services that actually occasionally display predatory journal. It happened, for instance, with Scopus. Now, now that we've seen what is predatory publishing, you might wonder how to publish then, because if you are a junior scholar, it can be hard to reach the very well-known journals and the very um, top of the journals in your field. And this is why uh, Politicon has a good, is a good opportunity as well to publish for junior scholars. And now I'm going to let uh, Max present this, uh, except if we have some questions, but I'm checking they don't seem to have any question on the chat on this. So I'm going to let Max present Politicon now. And if you have later on question on predatory publishing, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel, and uh, indeed, uh, please feel free to uh, pose your questions or comments to, uh, well, basically our conceptualization of, of predatory publishing that we presented, um, that is a pretty broad conceptualization, and of course, there are some caveats uh, involved uh, in it. Uh, but we thought, as I mentioned at the beginning, that um, we will connect um, this uh, sort of toolkit of how to um, avoid predatory publishing uh, with um, also the philosophy of, of IEPS Politicon as a junior academic journal, uh, as a journal that uh, tries to uh, promote uh, quality research um, in uh, uh, particular among junior scholars, but um, in fact, we are open to scholars of all uh, levels, so we don't make um, the formal requirements that you have to be um, a junior scholar in order to be able to submit uh, to the journal. Um, so uh, just to introduce a few uh, specifics, some of you might already be aware uh, of this when it comes to Politicon. Um, so it is a journal published by a global association of students and junior scholars, um, rather than a particular um, university, for instance, um, which brings certain advantages, uh, especially when it comes to internationalization, uh, because uh, both when you look at the structure uh, of the editorial board and the broader editorial team, um, and when you look at the structure of um, well, regional distribution of, of authors uh, of um, our, our published uh, articles and other pieces, you can see that uh, they um, come more or less from all over the globe. Of course, um, we don't have a perfectly balanced distribution. We are always striving to um, improve uh, this diversity. Uh, but uh, unlike um, uh, traditional uh, student journals, which are usually based at a particular university uh, where the editorial board is composed by um, students or junior scholars of that particular university. Uh, we try to, and I think we also are quite successful in uh, being broad and international and a recent research um, has also um, confirmed it when it compared Politicon to two other um, journals that um, particularly focus on, on students and junior scholars and found that it uh, is uh, the most international one. Um, in addition, uh, through uh, our publisher, which is IEPS, the International Association for Political Science Students, uh, we benefit from partnerships with um, some of the senior scholarly organizations, and we are also honored to have uh, some of the representatives as well as additional uh, senior and notable um, uh, global scholars included uh, in our international uh, advisory uh, committee in particular. Uh, these are scholars from the International Political Science uh, Association. 
in terms of um, further specifics of how uh, the journal is structured and being run, um, so as already indicated, the editor board um, is composed exclusively of students and junior scholars, but junior scholar uh, is understood broadly, including also early career researchers, postdoc researchers, potentially um, also assistant professors. Um, and we also have a large database of external peer reviewers. Um, so peer review is a very important feature um, in Politicon as well as in any uh, serious journal as opposed to predatory journals, um, as you could uh, have heard in the first part of this webinar. Um, and we rely um, also to a large extent on junior scholars, uh, usually a bit more experienced uh, junior scholars, so it is rare to have uh, an undergraduate as um, a peer reviewer, although uh, in case we can see that uh, there is a demonstrated research experience uh, in a particular specific subfield uh, of specialization of that undergraduate, we don't uh, discriminate, uh, so to speak, uh, on this basis either. Um, but so we do have this broad database and we um, usually are able to find a, a good match uh, between um, the uh, specific uh, field of, um, of specialization of the particular manuscript and then of, um, of those of the peer reviewers. And the peer review follows after the first round of the editor review, which is also a common approach in many scholarly uh, journals. And in this first round, well, what can happen is that there is a desk rejection, but I will um, discuss in a moment um, some of the specifics, perhaps, or at least more rare features um, of our desk rejection as opposed to a number of other journals. Um, IPES Politicon is published uh, since 2001, but if you look at uh, some of the first issues of the journal, you can see that it has under undergone uh, quite significant changes since its first issues, in particular towards improving um, the academic quality uh, of the journal, towards improving the, well, in particular through the, through the peer review process. Um, and therefore, we um, currently uh, publish pieces that uh, resemble more the formats that are published um, in, in senior journals rather than those in, in more um, student-based magazines, which also are very important uh, in order to uh, generate and, um, and uh, broaden conversation, uh, but we have uh, adapted this more scholarly focus. Uh, the journal does encourage interdisciplinarity, um, scholars, uh, junior school students from different disciplines. We don't uh, restrict, of course, the accessibility to students or scholars of political science or international relations, um, but we do require that um, the phenomena that they uh, the article uh, or submission talks about uh, uh, is uh, are related to political science uh, or politics more broadly. Uh, so we don't adopt that kind of uh, well fake interdisciplinarity, so to speak, um, than the as the predatory journals, as you could have seen, um, that go from sometimes agriculture through library science to uh, to politics without um, any effort to stimulate connections and interactions and debates uh, between these uh, these subfields. So in Interdisciplinarity, which is meaningful, uh, that uh, is definitely welcome and um, open in, in Politicon. Um, there are multiple submission formats, as mentioned. Um, this is uh, not unlike in many established uh, journals, so it's not uh, something very uh, specific. So we have research papers as the format that um, aims for high standards and um, in the very best cases even for, uh, for scientific impact, which I think is uh, is really important that the junior scores are aiming for um, for this impact already at the beginning of uh, their career. Uh, but we also have other formats, and uh, usually with predatory um, journals, you will notice that um, they focus almost exclusively on research papers because these are usually most attractive from perspective of promotion and the prestige uh, that was discussed at the beginning. However, um, in fact, uh, many questions and, and puzzles are better tackled, um, we believe, in other formats, uh, and also these other formats are usually more accessible in terms of um, uh, the requirements um, uh, for, for getting published, and yet they uh, can show uh, very important um, uh, details and new information and, and uh, new, um, new um, arguments. So uh, what are, which are these formats? Um, the first one uh, are research notes, um, which um, place emphasis on new sources of data and methods. So usually 
In the research note, you don't see a detailed literature review or discussion of a theoretical or conceptual uh, kind, although there is some of it um, in order to establish the foundations that is, of course, important. But you do see a focus on uh, these new sources of data and methods in a particular um, area. Uh, for instance, um, uh, we had a recent research note uh, on measuring uh, certain um, certain uh, specifics of the concept of inequality, um, and so that is the kind of um, of work that. Uh, we invite in the form of research notes. Now, we also have book reviews uh, currently in an unsolicited form, therefore you are welcome to approach um, the editor board um, with uh, proposals for book reviews on a wide range of literature. Again, um, it has to be somehow related uh, to um, political science, to the debates in political science, uh, and we welcome these, uh, these proposals. Now, book reviews do not usually undergo the external peer review, but um, there is still an editorial review, so usually um, there is still some work to be done uh, since the submission of the initial version until, uh, well, um, in, in usual uh, case acceptance. Um, but um, I, I, it is a work that I usually aims for, uh, of course, improving um, the quality of um, the initial submission, um, also to make um, it more accessible uh, to a broader group of readers, because after all, uh, the aim of the book review uh, is to uh, introduce the book, its arguments, its content, its limitations uh, to an audience which most probably has not read uh, the book by someone who has read um, the book. Um, lastly, uh, a new format um, that we have introduced only recently and we hope to uh, support um, in the coming period and we hope to receive submissions um, uh, in particular of this kind are review essays. So these in some way, as um, also indicated in this slide, mirror uh, the research notes because um, unlike uh, research notes, uh, they do focus on uh, the discussion of the literature review of um, uh, certain conceptual or theoretical issue, uh, but they don't necessarily have uh, a special extended uh, discussion methodology and, and um, empirical results. So this can be a, combina a review of a combination of books in a subfield or a review of, well, in particular, new literature um, in, in a specific uh, subfield. Um, and of course, um, this uh, format also, as, as, or other formats, undergo uh, an evaluation. And usually we do have at least one external um, peer reviewer on a double blind basis for this, uh, this format. Um, but we think that um, this is particularly important nowadays because um, of the uh, extensive literature um, in more and more specific subfields that is being produced, that is being published, and that is quite hard usually to uh, to find uh, out about, uh, especially if you are new to a certain subfield. So these review essays can be a great help also from the reader's, uh, reader's perspective. In order to move from these more um, maybe practical and, and descriptive um, aspects to the well, core of what has been mentioned in the title of the philosophy uh, of the journal, um, I think that the philosophy that has developed, uh, especially um, in the past couple of years, is that the journey to the end matters for us. So uh, it's not just about getting an acceptance decision or eventually getting and being disappointed from uh, a rejection decision, uh, but by um, learning and, and developing your profile and experience and skills in the process um, of uh, since submission until the end of the evaluation um, uh, stage. Um, so even that's that's where these rejections come in. Of course, all journals, especially uh, better journals, will have desk rejections, unlike usually predatory journals. Um, but um, these desk rejections, in case of Politico, um, aim to provide some sort of a guidance for reworking or otherwise improving the manuscript in the future, which can be used then in new submissions to Politicon um, or then um, in, uh, in submitting the, the manuscript elsewhere. Uh, so we aim to avoid uh, very brief uh, desk rejection notifications that don't tell the authors uh, much, if anything, about uh, well, what is the issue with the particular manuscript. Uh, if uh, the manuscript is not re desk rejected, um, but it receives a rejection decision later on, this usually provides uh, even much more extensive feedback. So it is even much more rewarding in a sense um, than a desk rejection in terms of how to uh, further improve 
with the manuscript and maybe what to do uh, further with the manuscript. And um, what is in brackets is perhaps a bit co of a controversial statement that each text has a certain potential. Um, now, of course, um, the potential might be uh, that uh, the author learns in the process um, of receiving feedback to the text and not necessarily in um, the publishing of the text. Um, however, um, I think this is an important feature uh, that we try to apply across um, all the submissions uh, that we receive. Um, also, the journal um, well, pays attention and is aware uh, of the challenge um, based on the fact that um, it's exclusively published in English, um, but usually, especially because we are a very international journal, um, not um, many or not most of the authors are not native English speakers. Um, therefore, um, it is important uh, to decrease barriers caused by language. And our, our main tool uh, to deal with this uh, is uh, the uh, proofreading system that we have applied. Now, of course, you do need to be able as an author to formulate ideas uh, in English to an extent that they are comprehensive already at the initial uh, submission, but provided that there is a, a really good quality research by someone who is um, not a native English speaker and has some language uh, challenges, uh, we do not require uh, that person to find an own uh, proofreader, um, usually uh, by paying uh, from own budget, but we do provide that, uh, that service at a later stage. Also, uh, the title of this webinar includes the notion of open access. Uh, so the journal currently is open access. There is no subscription. There is no uh, paywall. There is no article processing charge, um, which, as has been shown by, uh, by research before, increases the dissemination and citation possibilities. Now, of course, um, open access, even without uh, any charges, uh, can um, bring a challenge to the quality, uh, but um, as Emmanuel presented before, um, it is important not to judge the journal just on a basis of a very few uh, criteria, but to take a holistic, uh, holistic perspective. Therefore, um, open access can also be very empowering in this sense to present uh, research to a broad audience, and that is exactly why uh, Politicon currently uh, adapts uh, this model. There is still some time for uh, questions um, or comments, if you um, have any, so please feel free uh, to raise them. I hope the chat works as uh, it is expected to work. Um, but in the meanwhile, um, just uh, let's briefly go through uh, some of the reasons or advantages uh, of the journal uh, that may be interesting for you, especially, but not only as a junior scholar uh, or a student, um, to consider it as a platform for submitting and in case you are successful for publishing your research. Um, so as mentioned, the crucial criterion is quality. So even though we are a junior academic journal, the um, editor board is composed of students and junior scholars. We do place um, a lot of emphasis uh, on the peer review uh, but also uh, on the quality in terms of outreach once uh, the articles are published. Um, so thanks to our partnership with Crossref, each article and each issue uh, and also other um, piece that is being published, such as a research note um, or a book review, receives a valid digital object identifier, which increases, again, the outreach um, and also the potential for the for the piece to be quoted. Uh, we are indexed, well, currently our main um, platform in which we are indexed is the International Political Science Abstracts, which is a very um, reliable platform to identify um, quality journals um, in political science. Again, as mentioned before, uh, you should not judge the journal only on basis of one criterion. So again, uh, indexing is not sufficient, um, but it can be an indication for you. Um, and um, only very few journals that are um, mainly run by, by junior scholars are indexed um, in the current publishing landscape. Um, as mentioned, we also offer this free proofreading for articles which successfully pass the uh, peer review process. Uh, so this can be a great benefit, especially if you are non uh, non-native speaker. Um, open access format with no charges to the authors um, brings us to the, to the second set of advantages of the journal linked to the concept of accessibility. Um, 
particularly thanks to uh, our um, being, pub being published by IEPS. Um, there are unique promotional opportunities through the IEPS channels, um, social media that increase the outreach of the journal, um, not necessarily just in the scholarly community, but rather uh, in a broader community of um, well, junior uh, scholar students and political science enthusiasts. Uh, so this is, um, uh, I think, a particularly strong um, advantage uh, if you want to reach with your research beyond uh, beyond the scholarly or expert uh, community. Um, also, we are developing further uh, tools to increase the accessibility uh, of the journal. Um, so we will present this hopefully soon. Um, and um, in the meanwhile, you can expect that um, we, our efforts will continue in this uh, direction, um, which is also an encouragement for you to submit uh, to the journal. And uh, finally, as mentioned, and this is also linked to quality, um, responsive but rigorous double-blind peer review process. Um, so you can and should expect um, a meaningful feedback uh, on your submission, but you should not expect that uh, it will be very easy, especially if um, this is uh, an early experience for you. Uh, so you should be open to this challenge um, of uh, replying uh, to uh, the reviews, uh, especially if you get a revise and resubmit a decision, which actually brings me to uh, the next slide. Uh, and you should be open uh, to uh, engage in dialogue uh, with the peer reviewers and sometimes with uh, the editors uh, as well. Um, you don't need to accept uh, all the, the suggestions or proposals to change your manuscript that you might receive uh, in the peer review process, uh, but you should be able to react to them and to justify uh, why, for instance, you decided not to incorporate a certain feature uh, or a certain suggestion. Um, so as you can see on the slide, um, the peer review has multiple rounds, um, uh, but the main uh, external peer review round um, can finish with four uh, types of uh, decisions. Um, you usually we, we get to revise and resubmit decision, meaning that uh, you get the peer reviews as an author and you are expected within a certain time frame to uh, respond to the reviews and to revise uh, your manuscript um, in line with the reviews or well, justify uh, why you don't consider uh, some of the comments relevant for, for the purpose of the revision. Um, well, sometimes uh, the decision is a rejection, uh, which can be for various reasons, uh, although as um, well, the previous editorial note uh, to uh, volume 40 of the journal has indicated um, it is not usually uh, because of us not wanting to give a chance to uh, to make any um, revisions. Uh, it is rather because, um, well, um, there are certain major issues that would need to be rectified and therefore we rather see the potential for uh, the author to reflect on the reviews uh, in a calmer way uh, without a deadline and then submit a new in case of interest after you know the uh, the reviews are being reflected upon um, relatively rarely we also get um, evaluations that end with with publish with minor revisions uh, straight publish is very very rare which also should indicate that um, we are really interested in this conversation with the authors uh, and we are interested in um, the authors um, well, getting some valuable experience uh, beyond just getting sort of a, a publication um, uh, out of it in case they are they are successful in the peer review. Um, so usually efforts invested into the revisions um, uh, count as a necessary condition to get published uh, in this journal, um, which is uh, usually the same across all uh, journals which take uh, academic quality seriously and which aim to uh, well, move forward our knowledge and, um, and discover uh, new phenomena, reply or unpack new puzzles. Um, this, is, this is a standard, uh, it's not uh, an exception, it's not supposed to be one. Um, we also have uh, submission deadlines um, throughout the year, usually four times a year, uh, but in practice uh, we accept submissions on a rolling basis. The deadlines are primarily to um, well, encourage those who, who uh, work better with a deadline in mind 
uh, to submit by a certain deadline and also uh, to organize uh, our peer review process. So, for instance, if there's a deadline, you submit before the deadline, um, there is a somewhat better chance that um, the evaluation will be uh, ready earlier than uh, if you submit after the deadline. Now, however, again, as Manuel mentioned in the first part, uh, we don't have firm um, deadlines for the editor board uh, to decide on the manuscripts precisely because that would uh, impede uh, the quality um, of the evaluation. Of course, we aim it not to be excessively long, and usually uh, if uh, it is be beyond uh, three months, especially in the first round um, of the review, uh, then um, it usually means that there were some difficulties in receiving, in getting reviewers or um, in, uh, in evaluating the paper at that stage, uh, but uh, we don't have firm deadlines, and that serves the purpose of quality. It's not uh, to make the authors wait uh, for a longer time. And, uh, of course, um, this uh, slide is by far not an extensive discussion um, of our uh, submission guidelines of, of advice uh, on how to, um, well, submit and also then uh, increase the chance to be successful um, in um, getting published uh, in Politicon. Um, however, uh, we thought to uh, well, basically end this presentation with a few more hands-on advice um, which you can use um, in your exploration of whether uh, you consider Politicon um, as a suitable platform uh, for your publishing needs and then whether uh, you decide to submit uh, your papers to us. At this point, um, I would take a last look on whether there are any questions. Um, I cannot see uh, any questions at this point. But, um, of course, um, this should be available uh, as a recording on the IAPS main YouTube platform. Uh, so, um, you should have access to it um, at a later stage as well. Um, and if you are watching this as a recording rather than as a webinar, you are, of course, invited uh, to reach out. Uh, to uh, the editorial board um, to consult um, our websites. Um, you can see there the well, currently new uh, website that will be launched um, officially very soon uh, and uh, to ask your questions in that form uh, as well. So if you don't have um, any questions at this point, well, thank you very much to those of you who have been watching uh, this webinar. And um, both Emmanuel and I hope that you are now a little more equipped uh, to avoid uh, getting involved in predatory or otherwise poor and unethical instances of academic publishing. And then have uh, a slightly more nuanced idea of not only the aims and scope, but also the underlying philosophy of Politicon uh, as a junior academic journal. So please uh, keep uh, in touch and good luck uh, with your uh, efforts um, in um, engaging in the academic conversation, among others also uh, through academic publishing. <laughs>